Hi everyone! Today I am working on a messy background again and I'm doing an intuitive figure painting. So I'm looking for shapes and places that uh, appeal to me and that look uh, like they could be a continuation of the figure. And I'm just placing some heads in and uh, you can see I've put a bit of chalk lines around where I feel the figures are, are going to be. And I'm painting around the figures in a negative manner with a neutral color just to get rid of all the busy um, marks in the background. So this background is on paper and it's uh, Strathmore mixed media paper. It comes in a pad, I think of 15 sheets, and the size is 18 by 24. It is ready to use uh, right from the pad. You don't have to gesso it or anything. So I put it out uh, on my table when I'm painting other work and I just offload my brush onto it as I go. And then I Put some collage paper onto it, I might make some more marks into it, some stencils until I get a lot of information that I can respond to. So today I selected this particular background to work on a figure painting and I'm just searching for places to find uh, shapes and make interesting shapes as I go and um, it's all about what to keep, what to let go, what to change. I don't want to cover the whole background though and that, that can be a tricky thing because you want to keep some of that information to peek through but you need to make the uh, whole painting cohesive. So I've got lime green uh, over on this side and I need to put it elsewhere in the painting so it's just not in one isolated area. I've mixed the green out of um, blue and yellow, so Benzie yellow and cerulean blue. So adding a little bit of green in, in various places and this lady is going to get a bag. Just give some balance to the other side of the painting and I want that to be popped through in a few places so that my eye moves around. Lightening up this bag a little bit and again moving that same color in around the painting. I find working intuitively like this is very fascinating. Uh, I could never get these types of figures and shapes um, just if I started drawing them on a blank sheet. So I really like finding the shapes and coming up with um, the background beforehand to have something to respond to. When you're doing figures like this, um, when I am, I don't worry too much about the exact proportions because they're very uh, abstracted and whimsical type figures. But I do like to have them feel like they are human. I don't necessarily put arms on all of the figures. I do uh, also don't put faces on, but like to give an indication of a face, but not too much detail. So it's a constant going back and forth, adding and subtracting. And um, I do block the background out early on, but often change it later and um, I may choose a different color if, if the background choice isn't working at the end. 
and just go in to clean things up. Here you see me lightening up the top on this gal just to make a variation between her top and her bottom and I'm going to give her an arm as well to hold on to that bag and it's nice to extend some of your painting out to the edge uh, also you want to look at your shapes and your figures for variety and also I don't like to have all my um, people or in this case I think they're all ladies I don't like them all the same height in a row I think it's much more interesting to have that line bobbing up and down a bit so you can think of the line of their heads as implied line going across and just adding variety is so important here I'm just finessing the necks and making them look a little more um, realistic not not quite so blobby Again, thinking about value, adding darks in the equation as well. It's so easy to end up sitting in the mid-tones. Now I'm going to add a little bit of French dictionary pages to this gal's tights. Just to give it a little bit different appearance so that all the legs just aren't painted add a little bit of texture and um, interest. So I'm using matte medium to glue this on and I am sealing the paper on top. The reason for doing that is because it's very absorbent and it will take any paint you put on it and it will become a lot darker than you might have thought because it absorbs into the paper. So. I like to seal that paper so that there's a barrier coat on it before I apply paint on it. This also gives you a safety net if you decide you didn't like the color, you could wipe it back. So I'm going to add a little bit of collage in other places as well. I found this nifty admit one uh, ticket in my stash of stuff and it just seemed to be a great little pop of color there to have that orange. Unifying, coming in with some lighter color here. So when you work this way and you don't have a picture to follow, you really have to tune in to your painting and make decisions. And remember that you can always change your mind if it doesn't work out. You see me here using a variety of blue colors. I'm not sticking just to one blue. I like to have that variety. So I've got uh, teal and I've got some cerulean blue. Some of it I've added white to to make a tint. Putting a little bit of blue into the leg as well just to attach it. Finessing her arm a bit here. Looked a little bit scrawny. So I've covered over quite a bit of that text I put there. It just seemed to be standing out a little, but I want to just peek through a bit. So applying paint and then wiping it off. 
So although it's not totally finished, I think uh, I'm going to leave it here for today and uh, do a little bit of finessing later. <laughs>